I'll order the regular common council meeting, Monday, December 4th, 7 p.m. Roll call. Preble? Here. Langan? Here. Candy Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Yes. Get off the floor now. <laughs> yes. Can you hear me? That's probably a good thing. You're dropping something, it sounds like. But you're probably no. Okay, next item is Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice of the world. Meeting notes were posted last Friday at the library post office city hall on the website. Council acceptance of agenda. Motion to Discussion. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. I'm muted now. Can you hear me? Candy? Yes. Davis. Shaw? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Freebo? Yes. Langan? Yes. Motion passes. Personal appearances. Anyone in the audience that wishes to speak anything that's not on the agenda? Okay, we move on to the minutes from November 20th. Motion to approve. Second. Second to approve the minutes from November 20th. Any corrections or additions? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call. Andy Davis? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Preble? Yes. Langan? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Motion passes. Finally, report. Finally, Tim. Finance committee is right at 645. Uh, make a motion to approve the pay request number seven for BKS construction for the Henry Street Street Utility Improvement Project in the amount of $82,504.58. I'll second. Motion to second to pay BKS for Henry Street. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Shaw? Yes. Preble? Yes. Langan? Yes. Candy Davis? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Motion passes. Make a motion to approve bills and payroll in the amount of $198,726.67. I'll second. Motion to second. Pay the bills. Any discussion? Any questions on the bill? Hearing none, roll call. Shaw? Yes. Candy Davis? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Regal? Yes. Langan? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, for number three, we brought uh, the, uh, the uh, beer license uh, forward without recommendation to the council as we are waiting for some information to see if we can get that information. Because uh, right now, the way that the um, come through is that it's for inside and outside in its entirety. We're not comfortable with outside in its entirety means. And so we're going to, we're going to try to see if she can get some more information. So we'll be able to. Maybe 20. Um, she is not, she doesn't know the specifics of um, exactly where on the outside. She, she said it would be absolutely within your control to decide where outside. Her impression is that there are some outside batting cages and that I assume they are on the back side of the building. Um, so I, I, your options are to, she did indicate that he's interested in getting this going, um, but if you postpone it, that's you know obviously one of your options to postpone it. Um, you could uh, just do the inside, which in this weather is probably the most important piece of it for now. And if you want any outside, you get to come back then and come in. Um, you could, as an example, say uh, the inside and everything behind the back of the building, 
there are ways to describe it. What that it is a way to be comfortable, you could do it that way also. And then if that is still insufficient and once that amended, then we would have to ask for a, a definition amendment. So if he amends it, does he have to pay an additional fee for the application amendment? I think it's only 15. I don't know, but I'm not the license expert, but this is not like uh yeah, I'm not sure if you're yeah, yeah. I can't hear really long, but really you're coming through. Um I am I myself am very uncomfortable stating where from an outside perspective he could or could not have it. I'm comfortable with saying yes to the inside, and then once he can come forward and explain to either Wendy or you or us where on the outside he could have that amended, I don't want to tell him where it would be appropriate because I have no idea what his thoughts are. Right. So if you postpone and don't make a decision, he doesn't have to reapply or pay again, but he has to wait two weeks to do anything. Or if you do what you're suggesting, maybe give them the inside and nothing on the outside, then it's a reapplication. And that may be, I'm not sure if that's a 15 day build, you know, for a I don't year. Know how long it is. Yeah, I don't, again, not the expert. But again, probably not as worried about the outside right now. I know right. that they have a golf simulator inside that I'm sure he'd like to have it sooner than rather than later. Are we able to, this is any questions you have to make a motion for? All right. Um, are we able to waive? The additional the fee for the second time for the outside uh, because we are unclear now or is it just or can we make that decision when it comes back up as well? I think I would make that decision when it comes back up. Oh, sure. on, one, on one hand, uh, you you want to allow it to process, uh, but on the other hand, he could provide could have provided more information from the get go. So. Okay. Good. And the outside entire property, uh, I don't care which place it is. Yeah, okay. We don't allow it at any point. You have to have it. The strictly line stuff, there's, there's got to be some, some yeah. kind of limit as to where it can go. So I will make a motion to approve the Class B beer license for Foundation Athletics, Agent James Fox, for the inside of this building. And do we need to indicate who? Review if he chooses the third. We just leave that up. Okay. We, we leave it up to him at that point. I just want him to understand. <clears throat> we'll second. Second. Oh, a second back. Yeah, we'll make it clear. Make it clear that it's not that we're denying the outside. Yep. We just want more information. Okay, very good. The motion the second. We approve the license for the inside only. Any discussion? Um, I just have one question about that site. Does, is there anything when someone applies for a beer license that um, has to do with youth and that this is a different business than others that we give a beer license to? My 10 year old has worked out there without my supervision. So, is there anything that we were supposed to consider? Like issuing this kind of license for a business that houses you. It's not like a restaurant where it caters to younger kids. It caters to younger kids. It's not like a restaurant where kids enter with their parents. I mean, that's a good point. I don't believe that there's any issue with that. They are still subject to the same rules and guidelines. For example, I, I know why there's alcohol there, and lots of young folks running around between the meat bucket bu bu and, and, and golf lessons and the golf shop and everything else. And it, it, you know, you, you described the premises, and maybe that's the issue you're hung up on here. Um, we don't know, maybe you do know, I don't, uh, where the serving area is within that building and prescribe that. I, 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 think, I am very confident it's going to be this golf simulator. That's where the primary area is. Right. Correct. I mean, I, 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 to your point, if they're working out in the, the, the gym in there, yeah. and or they've got the, um, 
the depot, right? They've got their drive through yeah. right there as well. Right. Coffee shop things. So, um, and yeah, the golf is a back room. It's, it's a, a back room like stuck room. room. And that's, that has been described as the area where that's what they all call As it stands right now, it's yeah. side only. Right. So that would be everything. Yeah. And and just, yeah. just so to mm -hmm. be clear, the outside is probably because this, uh, this isn't really relevant or not. He told me personally that in the summertime, he wants to do a golf simulator because it takes up space and nobody's ever going to use it in the summertime. So that might be when he wants to have be able to move the beer outside for like batting cages or, or something like that. Because he, he said, you know, I just I don't want to be stuck with a golf simulator for three to four months when nobody's going to be using it to waste of space. So he wants to be able to move it in and move it out. Mm -hmm. And that at that point he might be wanting the beer to go outside. I hope he knows it would have to be a confined area, but well, it, I agree. It's just that the way he put it, wrote it down on the application, outside property, the property entirely. That's where we're kind of getting a little hung up. That doesn't saying. mean he wants people running around the building with beer. No, we know he that. Means, he hasn't probably decided yet where. That's and why he wants the freedom to decide where he's going to put that's the. Yeah, but well, as it stands right now, there is no. Right. Yeah. Again, we can't we can't go forward with the whole thing. I understand that. I'm just saying. Yeah. Because the question is, is there going to be a restriction of areas on the inside? Is the question <clears throat> right? I mean, normally with a uh, a bar or bar slash restaurant, you would have some sort of restrictions noticed. I I think a bowling alley is probably the best example. Oh, sure. I yeah. think of is like a place where kids are routinely dropped. If somebody worked at one for years, dropped off, and there's typically bars and even bars and alcohol served on the lanes. I guess my view is this maybe similar. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. It would be nice if you were here. I don't think you'd be here too. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the question is the motion right now is allowing it on the inside. You're comfortable with that, then if you want to see outside, you can come back. Sure. I'm so comfortable with my motion. Sounds like the good will still be anywhere in the inside. Any other discussion? Roll call. Shaw? Yes. Ken Davis? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. Burdick? He's new. Sorry, Jim. We didn't say forever. No. Rebel? Yes. Langan? Yes. Motion passes five to one. Looks like everything from finance. No, oh, that is. That's yeah. everything from finance. Thank you. Fire to the Okay, one quick update for me, then Chief is here. Um, we will not be holding a board meeting in December for the fire district uh, because of a lot of different reasons and conflicts, but um, we will resume our monthly meeting in January. Chief? Uh, board members have a copy of the preliminary December report. That's with two days prep. <laughs> um, you can kind of see it. Um, 105 911 incidents in the Western region, which is the old, in essence, uh, Edgerton, Fulton. Um, pretty close to our August record. Um, activity's just been insane. Um, way over on the right, in kind of the call out box, you can see you know, the number of calls per day. Um, you get a pretty good flavor for how it's playing out. 17 times during the month, uh, we had multiple calls going within the Edgerton region. Um, and then I realized the formatting cut it off. There were actually two days during the month where we had three incidents going simultaneously um, in the Edgerton region. So I kind of get a flavor for um, activity level. I did highlight Edgerton for you, uh, five minutes and 15 seconds. Um, I mean, that is a reflection. Uh, I'll just use one of the days when there was a triple incident going on. Um, we have enough staff during the day to get all three ambulances out the door. 
Uh, but if one of them is a cardiac incident, as an example, a uh, heart attack or something where the engine has to go along with the ambulance, that takes away the crew um, from the second ambulance, and therefore we've got to get units to come over from both. So um, I think as you go into 2024, if, if these trends continue, you're going to see that response time creeping up because we, we constantly are having to pull people out of Milton to cover calls over here. Um, 59 incidents in Edgerton, uh, 567 for the year. So get a flavor for that. Um, the biggest thing down under staffing, uh, I, I don't mean to skip over fire prevention. Uh, Chief Parker's doing just an absolutely amazing job. Um, we're up to over 1,100 properties that need to be inspected uh, twice a year. Uh, we're at 99.1%. He's got 10 to go for the month. So we figure that's probably a thing. <laughs> He's doing a great job. Um, personnel, probably the biggest thing. Um, Division Chief Lindzen, who's uh, done just an amazing job for us on the EMS uh, side of things as we've gone through the integration, just tons and tons of work um, with uh, the state on operational plans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, she has two small kids and we are just very demanding in the amount of time. Uh, our division chiefs have to be uh, OICs, which means they have to be available 24 hours a day. Um, that's just really hard on somebody with small kids and um, a spouse that works. So she has made the decision to leave the district um, and um, we'll be working on uh, how we want to deal with that eventually on a replacement. Um, the other one is uh, met, uh, when Nancy Towns left Rebecca Anderson. Rebecca had experience with the civic systems, what is it, Cassell, I think is the name of the software. So Rebecca was a great person to step in and help us get the new accounting system all up and running, get it all cleaned out, get all the accounts kept over. Um, so we're kind of past that. We're getting into normal operations and uh, so Rebecca is going to go back into retirement, <laughs> which is a great thing for her. Um, and we'll be looking for a permanent replacement for her. Flip side on the back, um, again, uh, the bottom right hand corner, it's green. Um, you're probably pretty smart to figure out that with the amount of activity we had in November, I think when you see the November numbers, uh, it's going to put a lot of stress on that just because of the amount of activity, the number of times the paid out call had to come back in and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do want, I want to say thank you to Ramona. I probably don't say it often enough in terms of how much help she is. Um, as part of the stations projects, we've been actively talking with USDA about potential low interest uh, funding. Um, that application packet looks a little bit like the Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, and so we want to get this right, um, which means somebody other than me filling out, you know, that kind of an application. So I talked to Ramona. Uh, she made a recommendation of a company that I think the city has used a couple of times with very, very good success. Um, had a nice meeting with Cedar Corp, and they are going to um, give us a proposal for, for helping us with the USDA, which I think basically helps everybody, all right, because if we can get that low interest funding from USDA. The other thing about USDA funding that is extremely beneficial is that it can be 40-year amortization. Um, I mean, these are 75-year buildings, right? So we're not amortizing something longer that has a usable value, like a, a, a vehicle or something. Um, but that should help also uh, minimize the cost impact on an annual basis uh, for whatever uh, we decide to do. So. Um, pretty much it. Thank you. Hey, Chief. Yes. Hey, uh, this is Jeff. Hey, uh, I noticed on one of the agendas last month uh, that there was discussion or going to be discussion on ch changing the way that the billing system for calls goes out. Was there anything come up on that or? I missed the meeting, but yeah, I'm, and I'm not exactly sure what the reference was. Um, the company that has done our EMS and fire billing for Candy, do you remember? Is before I came. I yeah, and I don't, but Jim, I don't think that's kind nope. of where your question is going. That's, that's not the billing. 
Right. It's we will be discussing in January. Oh, the as far yeah. as the I got oh, how, how how it's the the method used to distribute our allocation to the municipalities. Yes. So Jim, that'll be on the um, either the December agenda. Or we're going to be holding as we talked about holding a separate meeting to okay. discuss that as far as the allocations, how everything is allocated out between the different municipalities. Is that what you're referring to? Yep. Yep. That's what I. Yeah. I didn't make that meeting, so I didn't. No, you, you didn't miss it. No, you didn't miss it. And I, I, I guess just always wanting not to create people panicking. Uh, <laughs> um, I understand why it was brought up um, by some of the municipalities that brought it up. I mean, I truly do. Um, but they're looking at only one portion of, of how that plays out across the municipalities, not looking at at least another major portion. So I think uh, my commitment to the board was to put together an assessment of the current funding mechanism and show them how that works based on equalized value, how that works based on population and how it works based on run by. And I think in the end, uh, they're gonna find that it's maybe more equitable than it currently appears to them. I'll just leave it at that. So Fellow, if yeah, yeah. you look at this report, how this kind of was brought up. If you look at Edgerton, it looks, you know, 59 calls to Edgerton. And let's say Albion had 14. So, in their defense, any other, it, um, the member from that area could look at this and say, how come Edgerton isn't paying a higher amount than what we are because you're getting so many calls? And that's where Chief is saying it's not just that because let's say there's call a pig to Wigley. That's an that's energy. what I was going to ask. <laughs> but what if it's somebody from Albion or something, right? So I, I have also asked Chief to say, dig into does that 59 mean that was a call to Edgerton for an Edgerton resident, or is that an Edgerton call for a different, you know? So he's looking at all of that information. And you know we're going to go through all of it. So it's just not real black and white, is it, Chief? I mean, there's no, it's 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 different things to look at. Doesn't mean it shouldn't be looked at, but well, well and Chief it's brought up at the last meeting I was at about the percentage of calls that go to five hundred five, the care center, and the, the apartments Elm. over there on Elm. Elm so that you know that stuff we don't get money for, right? No revenue, so. I'm just curious how if that's going to be factored out, Chief, or you're going to. I know you, you haven't talked about it yet. I thought you did discuss it some, but just something we need to consider when it comes up. And I know you'll do the package, so I'm hoping that's in there, Chief. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right, Jim. I mean, I as I said, I I understand why it got brought up. I think there is a much bigger picture that hopefully I can explain to those that brought it up that uh, isn't quite what it looks like. So. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Let it go. I promise. Let it go. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, we, um, no, we had planks at the last yeah. plank which meeting. We had the two. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. so those they had their time lapse that yeah. has to happen. Yeah. So, on your next council meeting, will be your resolutions for adopting those TIF plans. That was the those are the two items I can remember from the planning commission. Jeff. That was something else I don't remember. What is in the twelfth? We have a public hearing for a rezone and a flat and a text amendment. Right. That's not correct. Okay, thanks. Mayor, all the person of staff reports. Nomination papers are available to be taken out now. <laughs> other than that, I don't think of, I can't think of anything else going on other than a lot of holidays coming up right now. So. Anybody else have anything? Um, well, for the holidays was a great success. Yeah. 
Had wonderful, I, every time I go into a uh, business here in town, everybody, I hear people talking about it. They're saying, what a great, so, event it was. I did not get, I was here and then I didn't go to the thing that night, but um, I was the crowd down there. I didn't get to see it. Good. But from what I have been, I, with you, Paul, I was kind of over there and wasn't able to watch everything, but everybody I talked to said they felt it was the biggest crowd we've had. And still couldn't hear for some reason, even though we tested the PA system ahead of time. I heard complaints about that. But Hopefully maybe get that one next year. Chief, what do you think as far as the crowd? I thought it was great. And Candy was the leader this year. She did a great job. Oh, I, oh yeah. It, it, like I said, it takes a village and every one of our people in our village has their own section. Of course, Jim Capellan with how he runs the lights at Central Park and everybody has a big piece in this. All I had to do was set up a meeting. Everybody did the work, so. <laughs> I walked the entire route up and back on the side of the street on the sidewalks. People were just amazed. They loved it. I mean, it was a good crowd. And then the, the, just everybody was commenting how great it was. So I had one of the best turnouts I think we had awesome. also. It looked pretty crowded getting right through there. Good weather, which is always good. Yes. Yeah. OK, well, there's nothing else. Uh, somebody want to do number nine here? Sure. I'm going to be going to closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statute 1985 1 e deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session to discuss and consider land sale. I'll second. Motion and second to go into closed session. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Land? Yes. Rebo? Yes. Candy Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. Burdick? Yes. We are closed.